In the meantime, President Mnagagwa's administration in Harare is walking a tightrope on the economy. Inflation exchange rates coupled with the impact of the virus pandemic on the southern African country. Bringing me up to speed on some of the latest developments in Zimbabwe is Eddie Cross, economist and policy analyst based in Harare. Good evening to you, sir, and thank you for making it tonight through to the show. Thank you. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. Great. I, I really enjoy your, I, I enjoy your summary. Thank you so, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I know you're not a government worker, uh, but government workers are negotiating to be paid in dollars, U.S. dollars, that is, and not a Zim dollar. What's going on here? What's the bone of contention, Eddie? Tell me. I, I said to the Minister of Finance at the beginning of the year, there's only one thing on the agenda for this year, and that's monetary policy. And he's got to get it right. Um, right now, we've got a parallel market rate, which is running away and setting retail prices. And this is really damaging the spending power of ordinary Zimbabweans, very serious. Uh, how is the new year starting off, broadly speaking, for the administration in Harare? Well, we had a good year last year, a very good year. Um, inflation came down dramatically from, you know, massive levels at the beginning of the year to about 5 5.6, 5.7% per month at the end of the year. Very big achievement. Uh, we were able to stabilize the foreign exchange market to some extent, but we had significant growth in the economy. My own estimate is uh, we double-digit growth for last year. This year, we face very serious problems. Um, we have a parallel market exchange rate, which is running away. It's not justified, but it's running away with, with us. Uh, on top of that, we have serious power shortages, and uh, this is inhibiting industrial output. And I think we're going to have a year which is mixed fortunes. Commodity markets are still very strong. And I see ex exports from Zimbabwe. Our foreign exchange earnings last year were, were massive, um, nearly $10 billion. And we're running a very significant balance of payment surplus. So I don't see any problems on that side. But it's monetary policy that's really screwing things up at the moment. Uh, when you say monetary policy on one side, inflation is another thing. It seems to be making a comeback. How biting is this for ordinary Zimbabweans right now? Well, inflation is not really escalating to that extent. Um, I think there are inflationary pressures in the economy. I think we've now got imported inflation. Uh, bridging costs have risen internationally. There's a, inflation is running at about seven to nine percent, whereas last year it was sort of three and three and a half percent. And I think these are all factors contributing to the inflationary pressures here. But I think our main problem, our, the principal problem here, is that we don't have a proper market for foreign exchange. The auction has helped, but uh, the auction itself is no longer meeting demand. And the real problem here is how do we move from a fairly controlled economy with exchange control to an open market economy with no exchange control? And I think that's the principal issue confronting the Ministry of, Foreign, of Finance at the moment. Uh, is the administration or the central bank or reserve bank of Zimbabwe under pressure to drop the, the Zimbabwean dollar for the U.S. dollar. Is that a reality that is beginning likely to happen once again? We've been, you've been through that before. Yeah, that's not going to happen. We are, we are not going to dollarize. Uh, but I must say that even though I say that, the majority of retail transactions in cash are done in U.S. dollars. Uh, but the great majority of transactions are electronic in nature. And the electronic transfers are completely dominated by the local currency. So the local currency is still the principal means of exchange. But there's no doubt about it. We're under pressure uh, to go the other direction and dollarize. I don't think our authorities are going to allow that. I think it's more likely to go in the direction of adopting our local currency as the sole means of exchange, lifting exchange control and liberalizing completely. And frankly, that's the only way to go forward. Where is the demand pressure coming from on, on, on a foreign exchange in Zimbabwe? Who is making this, uh, this uh, demand? Where is it coming from? It's a very, very good question, and it's a complex one to respond to. Our formal sector, balance of payments, is strongly in surplus. 
Uh, last year, we imported about six billion dollars worth of goods, and we we had five, uh, ten, nearly ten billion dollars of foreign exchange inflows. That's formal sector, but we have a massive informal sector, and we have no idea what sort of trading is going on informally, with smuggling taking place and so on. But on top of that, we have a very substantial gold industry, where only about 20% of the gold is marketed formally, and 80%, maybe, I don't think it's more than that, 80% is marketed informally and is smuggled out of the country. And the buyers of that gold, and that's about 50 tons a year, uh, and you can work it out for yourself, that's, that's several billion dollars. The buyers of that gold have to buy U.S. dollars in order to buy the gold, and that creates the the base demand for the for for the product. And then on top of that, there's all the other things. If you want to buy fuel in Zimbabwe, it's U.S. dollars. If you want, if some of our taxes are in U.S. dollars. So there's a there's a demand for U.S. dollars, which has to be met from our inflows, and this is boosting the informal rate for the U, for the U.S. dollar which stands today at about 200 to 1, whereas the auction rate today was 118. So uh, there's a massive gap between the informal sector rate and the formal sector, and, and that's distorting domestic prices. And that's where the crisis is coming in terms of our civil service and the armed forces. They're paid in RTGS, and uh, they simply can't survive. Uh, their incomes have been cut by two-thirds in the last year. Well, that's the real, that's the, that's the big problem. Mm. Uh, this conversation will be wrapping up on the side of the virus and the vaccination, Eddie. Uh, where are we on those curfews and restrictions uh, at the moment? Uh, schools are now fully reopened in Zimbabwe. Yeah. We, in the last week, we opened our borders completely. Um, tourists no longer have to go through any kind of uh, detention on arrival, providing they're vaccinated. And I think that our domestic situation is that really we're back to normal. And I think the reason for that is that the on, the new variety, the new variation of uh, COVID-19 swept through this country like wildfire. Um, I, was, I had it in, in, in November before Christmas. And, uh, and I must say, you know, the, it just, just went through this country. And I think that the major, we have what we call now herd Im immunity. About a third of our population, maybe 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 forty percent, is now fully vaccinated. Um, but I think the real the real thing that has dealt with the with the, the virus here mm. has been this this uh, widespread infection rate, yeah. which we've now got through. And I must say, our hospitals are no longer under pressure. That's and it's, it's quite a relief. Congratulations, uh, uh, Eddie Cross. Thank you for your time tonight on the show. Have a pleasant night. Economist and policy analyst in Harare. See you next time.